Hi, I'm Dr. Graham Baird, and I'm back at the University of Northern Colorado Zurich Demonstration Garden. This time I'm going to show you how to take the trend and plunge of geologic structures that approximate lines. So like with measuring planes, we're going to simplify things here in that we're going to use the face of the plot markers again to measure trend and plunge, but we need to put a linear structure on there. So what you can see I've done is I've just put a chalk line. And so this approximates geologic structures like fold hinge lines, mineral or stretching lineations, and the intersection of uh, other geologic planes. To take the trend and plunge of a line, the first thing we have to do is define a vertical plane that goes through that line. Some people use their geologic notebook and they make sure that that notebook is in a vertical plane. And then you take the strike of that vertical plane. But with a little practice, that won't be necessary and you can just directly measure it by using the sighting arm or I like to jokingly refer to as the bear stabber, which is very good for sighting linear structures through the slot in the arm. Calling this the bear stabber also reminds you that you want to face this away from you with the mirror towards you. And this is important for making sure the button is in the right orientation when you take a down plunge trend direction. And so just like with taking strike and dip of planes, you want to orient yourself correctly. And in this case, you're going to face what's called down plunge in that we can see that our linear structure is plunging down away from us. So with the Brunton compass correctly oriented relative to us and us relative to our linear structure, we can then <clears throat> make sure that the Brunton is in a horizontal plane. We position ourselves over the Brunton and the linear structure and we can use the slot in the bear stabber to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. And in which case, I'm going to watch the bullseye level until that's level. And when that is, and this is perfectly oriented down plunge, and I sometimes close one eye so I can get it perfectly aligned, I can then read off the compass direction that the north arrow is pointing to. So let's look at this from the top down. As you can see, I'm orienting the Brutton such that it's level based on the bullseye level. And then you can see the linear structure that I'm measuring is perfectly aligned in the slot in the sighting arm or bear stabber. And from there, you can then take the direction measurement as north, zero, four, east. We can follow the same process again with our azimuth Brunton, and you can see the linear structure is aligned in the slot in the bear stabber or sighting arm. The bullseye level is level, and you can read off the compass direction as here, 006. So close, but I didn't quite get exactly the same orientation as the previous measurement which gives you some idea about the reproducibility of taking multiple measurements with a Brunton compass. Two degrees is not far off. And once I've written down that measurement, I am then going to rotate my Brunton into a vertical plane. And then the edge of the Brunton, again, is parallel to the linear structure and again just like with dip you could be holding the button this way or you could be holding it this way what's important is that the bar level is on the top and the numbers are on the bottom in order to take the plunge so once we have the button in a vertical plane it's aligned parallel to our linear structure we then rotate the arm on the back until the bar level is 
level, and then we read off the measurement. So looking from the perspective of directly onto the face of the Brunton when taking the plunge, you can see the Brunton is aligned with the linear structure. It's in a vertical plane. You then use the lever on the back to rotate until the bar level is level. And then you can read off the measurement here, 39 degrees. Unlike strike and dip, taking the orientation of linear structures only requires two measurements, the trend and the plunge.